stands in the midst of a Jewish tradition as he crafts the sayings in today's gospel. His audience are in the inner circle of his followers, his disciples of all ages, you and me. He speaks to us, his friends, as we gather and worship, put money in the basket, serve on committees, and try to live according to his ways and teachings. The teachings he gives us are independent sayings, but they link together like pearls on a string. So let us listen and apply to our lives what we hear from Christ. First, Christ uses the metaphor of the eye to illustrate the importance of leaders to be men and women of integrity, connecting what they say and do to the Lord, who are deep within themselves what they appear to be. That's what it means to be integral. A blind person cannot lead another blind person, or they will both fall into a pit, Jesus says. Of course, this is true in the literal physical sense, but greater and more deadly, the blindness of leaders unaware of their not seeing. Leaders in the church, in the world of business, in the family, who are unaware of their blind spots, blinded by ego, or anger, or prejudice, or selfishness, or power, who do not connect the dots of faith to their lives. We need to build lives of integrity by constantly asking that question, what does Jesus expect of me as I face all the issues of life, not excluded? We do not have to look far in our society to wince and mourn over headlines, blurring up yet another example of a leader failing in spectacular fashion due to moral or financial or legal failure. It happens in the church, in schools, in sports, in the corporate world, and in family life as well. Wherever there are those entrusted with leading others. Now, none of us are immune to the possibility of personal failures, but when leaders fail, especially when they use their positions of authority to conceal their misdeeds, the failure is even more catastrophic. It ripples out into many other innocent lives and brings suffering that lasts for a long, long time. So how do we, within the power, with the power of the Holy Spirit, how do we go about creating lives of integrity, being life-giving models for the people who surround us? Well, first of all, we don't follow the cliches, the slogans of the day. Live for yourself, first of all. If it feels good, do it. And neither are we captive by the easy certitudes of political parties. No. No, believers are those who look to Jesus, who says, follow me. Learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. I am the way and the truth and the life. And so we try to connect the dots between the way of Jesus and the specifics of our individual lives. Who we are, where we are, with whom we are, what we are about. Again, Jesus says, don't spend your energy pointing out the splinter in your neighbor's eye when you are unaware of the beam in your own eye. This humorous metaphor is an example of exaggerated speech, of course, but the point is clear. Maybe we draw away from our own failures by pointing the spotlight on the failures of those around us. But always, unless we keep focused on what we should be about, always the consequence is disorder, brokenness, wherever we are. But when we keep before us the teaching and example of Jesus, we have a mirror for what our lives should be. By being a good follower of this Jesus, we are being prepared to lead others. In all of this, it is important to notice that Jesus is not saying that a leader who fails can no longer be useful to God and the coming of the kingdom of God. No. 
Jesus' teaching does not call us to purge the ranks of leadership or to assume the worst of people who are in leadership. But Jesus is calling us to purge ourselves of our own hypocrisy, our lack of self-awareness, or our delusion that our private lives do not have to square with our public image. We must integrate, align our private and public lives. So do we become men and women of integrity. And so we are to be effective leaders wherever we are. You know, human history, including the unfolding of church history, is full of heroes who made it their greatest contribution for the coming of the kingdom that after a time of terrible personal failure. Think of King David, of St. Paul, of St. Peter, of St. Ignatius of Loyola. God's grace of forgiveness can wipe away the scars of our failures and redeem us from our worst mistakes. There can be a future after failure even for our Christian leaders, but only if that failure digs a deeper well of humility and self-awareness and accountability. In the end, inevitably, who we are in our deeper self emerges. And so Jesus concluded, a tree is known for its fruit, a good tree produces good fruit. So we are challenged Courage to live the message of today's gospel.